Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today we're going to be working on the 350Z with the L33 swap big cam um, car. So we're going to be working on this thing, trying to work out some bugs. I did a little live stream and the video kind of sucked. Um, and yesterday just kind of, I don't know, I got overwhelmed yesterday with working on this thing and tuning on it. And I just kind of made a live stream explaining some of the issues, but the video kind of sucked because I don't have a lot of service in the shop here. Um, but anyways, we're gonna work on this thing and try to get it ironed out. In the last video, we did fix the rocker arms. Uh, the rocker arms ended up being like a Chinese 1.7 roller rocker. And for some reason they were hanging the valves open. So we put factory rockers with a trunnion upgrade in this thing. And uh, now they, it seems to be running on all eight cylinders which can't really tune the car until it runs on all eight. That's a good start. Uh, but we had some issues after that where I was tuning on the thing and it would never come down to idle. It would idle hang and it ended up being that the throttle position sensor wasn't like calibrated or it just wasn't set right. Uh, so the TPS was reading 2% when the throttle was completely shut. So um, for it to go into you know its idle tables and idle mode with the factory computer that's why with like holly and um, a lot of these cars when you first start tuning on them you always got to make sure that the tps is calibrated um 100 because at, it needs to be at like zero percent to actually initiate idle um in the computer because obviously these gm computers they have a lot of different tables and stuff like that and they have certain tables just for idle so idle airflow your idle ve idle timing uh, all that stuff it has to be set the tps has to be set for those tables to activate so that was the first thing we did yesterday um, and i got it to idle a lot better and the day before that we got it running good wide open and we made a couple dyno pulls my buddy tim the owner of the car was here and i kind of wanted to just make sure that the engine was good and healthy and making good power and stuff like that and hitting on all eight and this thing made a good, good amount of power like 347 wheel horsepower na um long tube header it's a good it's a good combo but uh tuning the drivability stuff has been a lot of a, it's been a challenge for me to say the least uh the idle stuff i can usually get i can get tuned pretty well but uh these big injectors with the um you know large camshaft that is in this thing and the factory computer has just kind of thrown me for a little bit of a loop. Um, I'm still learning every day with HP tuner stuff and it's a little bit more complex than a lot of the other systems like Holly um, and whatever else you can get for LS. It's just the factory computer obviously is, I don't think it was really ever designed to manipulate. So obviously a little bit more complex. So anyways, uh, I'm going to actually start over with the tune here and I'm gonna use a factory file from Matt Happel. Um, <clears throat> the Sloppy Mechanics Wiki page is a great, uh, useful tool for a lot of people to use. If they're kind of stumped on a setup, you can kind of just get a base file from Sloppy uh, Mechanics Wiki page and you know, obviously get you going a lot better than you know, trying to do this stuff from scratch. And I'll be completely honest, guys, I use a lot of sloppy base files when I tune vehicles for customers. Um, you know, it's, a, it's always a good start to work off of. Is less time consuming doing it that way versus building your own custom stuff. Like with Hondas, when I tune Hondas a lot of times, I already have a lot of files that I've built over the years. Um, and I use a lot of them to, for a starting base when, you know, firing up somebody's car that they bring in. Um, something similar, whatever. The Sloppy Mechanics base files are kind of the same way. I just don't have a lot of, um, I guess, research. And, or I, I guess I just don't have a lot of time developing my own maps because the Sloppy Mechanics wiki page was always there for me to use. So, like I said, that's what we're going to try today is we're just going to, you know, dive right in and upload um, a Sloppy base file that utilizes the Snake Eater 1000 injectors and um yeah i think the file that i'm going to use is a three bar uh map sensor but we're going to change it to a one bar and uh fire it up and see how she runs and i appreciate everybody's patience with me lately life's been really crazy um it's been really crazy like life has been a huge roller coaster last like month and um obviously like even all summer with you know just this year is just kind of shitty 
for everybody. And, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's just been tough on all of us. And with me, especially with the new shop and uh, being as busy as I am, I just can't, I can't keep up with a lot of stuff. And I really, I have a couple customer cars here right now that, um, you know, I just can't do all of them at once. Um, you know, and, and especially on top of like everything that I'm doing with the website, I'm actually outsourcing my injector orders now uh, to a guy named Jason down in Texas. And he's been helping me fill a lot of the Hunter Tuned orders. Uh, we're still kind of swinging full fledged on that. Um, and I do have plans here soon in the future to add some additional things to my website um, to further help you guys out with your builds and stuff like that. So, uh, like I said, this year's just been really crazy, and I apologize to everybody that I have not. Um, responded to or gotten back to or whatever just sometimes I, I get overwhelmed with messages I think I have like 42 unread you know tuning messages that I have not gotten back to people with um, and it, it's just like I, I see one and I almost just get angry because I have to finish one shit storm of my life before I can move on to another so that's just a thing where uh, once I get a couple of these other really big projects out of the shop like this truck that we've been working on that is just a badass unit uh, This will actually be on the dyno today as well. Uh, it's just It's a lot easier for me mentally to have a clearer head when it comes to uh, Taking on new work. I have to have some of the big stuff done To be able to want to take on more work. I can't I simply cannot take on um you know the work that people are asking of me right now and like i said i really appreciate everybody's patience and i really appreciate all the guys that all the people that have supported me and uh understand all that uh i don't really know what else to say like i said life's been really crazy lately um if you guys follow me on facebook uh you probably have seen what happened uh, maybe i'll talk about it later maybe i won't uh it's it's a touchy subject but uh Anyways, so let's get tuning. Alrighty guys, so we have uh, Matt, uh, the sloppy mechanics. Uh, we have a uh, Gen 1 billet 7875 pump gas as a uh, Snake Eater 1000cc uh, injector tune here. This is a three bar tune up. So if we go under airflow in general, you can see the map sensor is reading 329. And if we go to our compare file, which is the file that is on the car currently, you can see that it's reading 94.43. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this 329.41 to 94.43 on the map sensor, just because we cannot change the, um, we cannot change the operating system on this tune. Uh, once you go to like a three bar or a speed density file, you can't go back um, unless you have the original file that you started with. So, like I said, we're just going to change the map sensor stuff here, and then the offset number is 10.33. So we'll go here That's it. We're just gonna change. We're just gonna change a map sensor. We're literally not even gonna change anything else unless this has an electric trans, uh, which it does. So we'll just tell it it has a non-electric auto tranny under the transmission tab. So uh, because this car is a stick shift, so and obviously like Vats is off, I'm sure. Um, and then we'll have to change like the fans and stuff, obviously on this tune. But uh, we're just gonna see if she runs first with this file. Um, and we're gonna write and tire as Matt Happel would say we're just gonna bulldoze right over what's on the computer right now We're gonna completely change the whole system. So We're gonna go in and grab our cable Plug it into the old laptop Go to write and tire grab the key Flip that guy on, and then we'll go to right, now that we're plugged in, right and tire. 
So now we're gonna wait. Uh, it's probably gonna be like a, two minutes or three minutes for the right and tire. And then after we're done doing the right and tire, we're gonna leave the car off, the key off, key out of the ignition, and uh, we're gonna leave it sit for like a minute or two after we do the right and tire so it, so the file completely takes to the ECU properly. Uh, that was a tip that was actually given to me by Matt, so. And it's writing, so now we wait and we'll catch up after we do uh, the right and see how this thing runs. Alrighty guys, so uh, right completed. We've let the car sit for a few minutes now with the key off and uh, I have not started the car at all today. So we're gonna see literally exactly how this thing's gonna run um, from a cold start right away. Uh, this is the Matt, this is Matt's tune. Um, yeah, totally different setup, but we'll see what it does and see how it runs. I shouldn't say it's a base file. These are tuned files that Matt just gives people. <laughs> um, but 
this is uh, really cool. We got a little bit of headway now on it and now we just gotta figure out why it's running rich at idle and rich cruising. Once we get that figured out, uh, I think the car should be a lot better than it was yesterday. And uh, my headspace is definitely a little clearer today than it was yesterday too. So um, anyways, thanks to Matt Happel again for helping out and uh, having the resources that he gives out to people. All right guys, so back to the car now. Um, I did say it, it's, it smelt like it was burning a little oil because the inlet manifold when I had the throttle body off messing with the TPS. I did notice that there was oil in the intake manifold and I think it's the catch can routing uh, how this is set up. So it has a hose coming from the driver's side valve cover going into the can and then one going to the va uh, vacuum reference on the manifold. So it's literally just kind of sucking the oil right into the manifold, um, which some setups it's okay, but this big cam, you know, brand new engine might uh, need to be routed a little bit differently. And I don't know how this can should be routed, but most of the catch cans that I deal with have a breather on them so it can vent off the crankcase pressure um, where this setup is a sealed system. So it's, it might be a little bit trickier to uh, get that to work right. Uh, like I said, all the stuff that I do, I usually just vent to a can and then drain it as needed. I don't usually run a vacuum source to the can um, because that usually ends up uh, sucking the oil into the combustion chamber. But anyways, uh, so we're gonna go back into the tune now and we're gonna see if we can get this thing to idle a little bit better, uh, air fuel wise, and get it to cruise a little bit better. Cause like I said, it's, it is currently uh, idling rich and it is also, um, uh, it's just running rich. So this VE looks a little weird uh, just because uh, that's another thing that kind of threw me for a loop, guys, is a lot of these big camshaft uh, cars, the VE table is not going to look pretty because of the way that the valve events happen inside the engine. I was thinking to myself last night and I'm like, the way that, this is kind of an analogy I told my friend Trevor uh, just to kind of dumb it down uh, to help him, help him understand. Uh, when you have a factory camshaft and say the injector or the valve opens for two seconds, it doesn't open that long. Obviously this is just like a, uh, a thing to help explain it. Uh, if the valve, if the valve is open for two seconds and the injector sprays at one second, uh, the combustion happens properly. If the valve opens for four seconds, because the duration of the camshaft is larger so the valve stays open longer and it opens larger because of the lift and that injector still sprays at one second yet the valve is open for four a lot of that fuel gets wasted um, and you just need to manipulate stuff you know especially at cruise and stuff when the engine isn't um, utilizing the lift and duration of the camshaft so like i said the ve table might be a little bit different on different camshaft setups where most Honda stuff or most, you know, stock cam LS or mild cam LS cars, they all kind of utilize um, a tapering trend, I think, with the VE. So as RPM and load increases, it's going to demand more and more fuel. Um, and it should be like a smooth linear kind of thing where, you know, big cam stuff or like I said, just different setups in general sometimes require the VE, you know, at certain spots, it might not want as much or it might want more depending on how the valve events are happening inside the engine. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, but like I said, yeah. And I'm going to try showing more of these cars on the channel. Um, you know, more of the hardship and more of the struggle that goes into, you know, my everyday life with tuning. Um, because like I said, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm always learning and um, You know, sometimes I got to reach out and get some help especially with these injectors, which I've never tuned before I've never tuned a set of snake eater thousands um, And obviously the injector data and stuff like that with HP tuners There's a lot more tables to adjust for injector stuff um, And I didn't really have anything to go off of so I was 
kind of playing from scratch, but I'm definitely going to be taking this map that Matt has on the wiki and I'm going to compare it later and I'm just going to see like what is all different and what changed uh, just so I can study it and learn it a little bit better for myself. Um, and like I said, I'm going to um, try to I'm going to try to do um, more of these videos where I kind of show everything that I've been doing and all the struggles that come about because you guys love to see the journey and it's cool to see the journey and see the struggles and see the outcome um, especially when it's a positive outcome it's just cool to see the progression and all that kind of stuff and I feel like ever since I got the new shop and this whole thing just kind of took off crazy good for me I'm very fortunate for it um, but ever since it took off I always thought to myself like oh I, I can't show the bad stuff because my you know I, I always wanted to portray this positive image but uh, cars are a struggle that's just the cold hard truth cars are a struggle and uh, doing this stuff is not easy and it's always a battle and you got to just keep going and keep fighting through it and a lot of the stuff that I've been doing lately has been tough mentally for me to, to figure out and I just I always felt like that that image is just not good for business when I portray that you know like all oh, this car's got issues or I have issues tuning this or I I don't know what I'm doing here or I don't know what I'm doing there I'm, I'm figuring it out and I'm trying my hardest to make it happen so like I said I'm, I'm gonna try to not give a fuck about that shit anymore and just show you raw footage like I used to back when I was at the garage the home garage um, I didn't really care, you know, but lately, like I said, I got the the shop and the chassis dyno now, and it just, um, I felt like I couldn't show a lot of the, the stuff. And I don't know why, but it's just something that I got to get over and just not give a shit and show you guys the real, the real shit, the real stuff. Um, so let's, let's pull some fuel out of the VE here. Um, we're going to pull fuel pretty much everywhere before wide open because wide open seemed like it was good um, and you can see the fuel values here um, are actually higher than they are at wide open so at 100 kpa over our fuel value is about 54 uh, 54 57 here at, at the wide open areas and cruising lower kpa were at 57 so that's just saying that there is more fuel present cruising than there is wide open. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, um, I'm just gonna slob a lot of this out of here. And we're gonna remove like 15%. So we're gonna multiply it by 0.85. It might be too much. I feel like that's gonna be too much because Another thing too is the larger the injector that you have in the vehicle. So if you have a stock injector, pulling 15% of you know, a 24 pound injector is not gonna be as much actual fuel as if you were to pull 15% from a 1,000 cc injector. 15% of a 1,000 or 100 pound is more than 15% of 24 pound or 240 cc. So uh, I'm going to put 5% back in. So we're going to 1.05 multiply, which is adding 5% back in. So we're going to just do that. I'm going to change the idle air fuel as well. So pretty much everything below 1,200 or everything below 800 even. Uh, we're going to pull out like 5%. And then this looks fairly smooth transition here, so we should be good there. Um, so we changed that, and now we're going to go to, um, I'm just gonna look at like if the PE is set here. PE is not set, so this is the power enrichment. It's just set at 1.0, so we're not gonna be having any additional fuel coming in at wide open. It's just gonna be running off of the VE, which is how I actually prefer to uh, run stuff. Uh, just tuning the VE. It's a lot easier for me. Uh, some tuners like using power enrichment and boost enrichment, um, but that's kind of where we're at for that. Um, I'm going to maybe add some... Um, we might 
have to go to the uh, airflow for the idle and we're gonna probably change some of the throttle follower stuff I usually just change the airflow tables I don't mess with the decay or the delay much so this throttle follower looks like it has more airflow than the file that was in there so I might just give this a little bit um, just to see if we can get that idle to come back around to normal on when you rev it and come back down like I said I might just give this a little bit more like 10% or so on both of them so the throttle cracker and the throttle follower uh, that these like I said these tables are just gonna be kind of uh, doing your um, it's gonna be manipulating the idle air control valve to do things when you come off the throttle when it so it can maintain idle and not dance around um, sometimes it's tough to get them perfect but we can get it pretty good I'm sure look at our ignition here another th Another trick that you can do with idling um, that sometimes I do on some cars is if the idle dips below or above the target, you can pull or subtract uh, timing with the idle adaptive spark. Uh, sometimes I play with that, sometimes I don't, uh, depending on how much I'm struggling. Sometimes I'll use the timing to maintain the idle. Uh, but other than that, I think we should be good to write this file. Here's our base idle airflow table, which we may uh, add or subtract from as well. Um, we're gonna have to turn the fans on and change this setup compared to what it was, so it is a two fan setup. You guys probably can't even see what I'm doing, which I apologize, but this stuff's pretty simple. 180, 170, which is what was on there. And then we're going to have to go through the engine diagnostics and get rid of a lot of the stuff from the transmission because this tune was for an auto tranny, which obviously it's going to throw a bunch of codes because it doesn't have an automatic transmission. So, but anyways, uh, we'll pick up and we can start doing some dyno runs, guys. And hopefully once I get this file written, we have a better idle and cruise because like I said, it was pretty rich before, so... Let's try to work that out and go for it again. All right, guys, so I've just spent the last uh, little while just ironing out the VE, getting the idle and cruise a little bit better. And uh, the car's running a lot better, guys. I'm really happy uh, with it. Like I said, I've just been kind of playing with my VE table here and getting all this stuff ironed out. It was rich on initial low rpm stabs so i had to fix that and it was also rich cruising and idling so it seems like it's going to be pretty good now uh, i did have one little lean spot at low rpm um kind of just taken off cruising it was a little lean so i got that one fixed um just a lot of little bugs with the fuel map here that i'm working out which like i said every cam is going to be a little different so no one map is going to be perfect for everything but that's why we dyno tune um and i did a little stab in looks like we're going to run around i want to run around a 12 5 air fuel um i don't know if it's going to like anymore uh any any leaner uh but we can we can check on the power here i got the dyno ready to go uh to record a run and um Looks like we're running about 20 degrees of ignition to start, so we can probably bump that up after we get everything else dialed in good. Idle is looking awesome. It's, I haven't seen a number above 10 at idle in the last day, so we got that ironed out. Um, so we'll cruise it here.
6,800, 6,700. So we'll see what it did on the power curve compared to the other day when I had it running good. Um, like I said, I had it running good the other day, but I couldn't seem to, no matter what I did to the VE and everything, I just couldn't get it to iron out at idle and cruise. So we'll uh, catch up with you. Well, uh, we'll catch up here with you in a second when we check out the uh, the dyno run. See what it did. All right, guys. So first run on our new map that we just made. Uh, 325 horsepower, 307 foot pounds. Um, and it looks really good until up top it's gonna want a little bit more timing I'm thinking so we are going to put some timing in it up top and kind of see how much more we can get out of it I bet you we can squeeze a little bit more power out of this thing uh, just timing alone uh, air fuel like I said seems fine we might play with it back and forth a little bit but I don't think we're gonna gain a whole lot um, so yeah but in the middle here the map that I had before seemed to overlay pretty good um, it's just up top where that timing wasn't there. I had like 23 degrees in it I think on that 23 or 24 on that other run. So we'll probably just splash a little bit of timing in um, See if we can bump that number up a little bit get it to make a little bit more top end And I don't know if it's quite quitting at 6800. It looks like it's kind of starting a flat line uh, Which like I told uh, Tim the owner of the car I told him I said this LS1 intake is definitely not going to show this cams ability that well because the LS1 intake is a um, intake manifold that makes a lot of bottom end torque and mid-range power it's not really a good high rpm manifold but what sucks with a lot of these swap cars is it's really tough with hood clearance to get anything decent to fit so I know a lot of companies are coming out with lower profile intake manifolds that make good high rpm power but it is still, still something that a lot of these companies are working out uh, but hopefully we'll get it dialed in and uh, we'll put some timing in this thing and give it another whack. I'm just like filming everything right now and filming all my thoughts I don't really care um, but another thing that just like has been sucking this year is just like maintaining and keeping up with orders and stuff and like I said Jason has been a huge help uh, with helping me with fill orders and stuff but I mean if, if somebody places an order two days ago and they opened a PayPal dispute because they haven't received tracking in two days that shit drives me up a wall like I literally have two PayPal disputes right now because of orders that got placed this week and haven't been shipped yet. Like I always tell people, uh, I'm gonna post it on the website for anything that gets placed. Please allow one week for handling time and one week for shipping. Just because USPS, FedEx, UPS, all of them are, are super behind right now because everybody's online shopping um, and everything is coming via mail. Um, I know USPS is super slow right now. UPS, FedEx, they're all like super slow. Uh, they, nobody can guarantee overnight shipping. Priority can't even get guaranteed, etc. cetera. Uh, so yeah, anyways guys, just I think every one of you that has been patient with me in these tough times, um, you know, don't be opening PayPal disputes on me for an order that you placed two days ago. Just please don't anyways we put two degrees of timing in this thing and it went from 325 to 337 so 
Uh, we might be on the edge of timing. Uh, I might try another degree and see if it picks up a little bit more. If it doesn't pick up, uh, we'll pull it back out. But like I said, I think this oil catch can is kind of screwing this setup over because it's ingesting oil into the intake. And it's definitely coming out of the exhaust. I don't know if you guys can see on video, but it is definitely uh, burning oil because of that catch can. So what I might try on this next run is I'm just gonna unhook the line from the can or unhook the valve cover side just so it can't ingest it, the oil anymore and maybe just cap off the one side because when you uh, ingest oil into the intake, it's going to uh, lower the octane rating of the fuel, hence not take the timing like it should. So um, that's just one more thing I'm gonna do right now. I might bump the limiter like 200 RPM higher. It is already at 6,900, 6,800, but this cam is huge and it's probably gonna want 72 or so. Uh, 100 rpm plus it's trunnion upgrade the whole the heads are built like this thing ported manifold it's it's a good little setup so um and for a car to make this kind of power and ls all motor ls to make this kind of power on my dyno is really good so uh, this is the highest horsepower na ls that's hit the dyno yet and uh it's doing really good and driving awesome that's the thing before is i can get it to run good wide open before but i could not get it to cruise and drive as good as it is right now so i'm very happy um, I'm going to do some changes and we'll pick up in a second. Alrighty. So, uh, what I did is I unhooked the breather to the valve cover here, um, just to see if this is going to help. Um, and I took the vacuum line that's going to the catch can and I just shoved a bolt in it temporarily and I unhooked the vent to the can here just to open up the PCB system a little bit. Um, I do think that will help anytime you can give the, anytime you can take away crankcase pressure from building up, you're going to make more horsepower. Um, I know on my Mustang, I had an issue one time where the crankcase or the oil catch can, the vent or the breather tube was too small and the car was burning oil. I opened up the breather so I changed the catch can setup on the Mustang to an, a way larger opening breather and the car quit burning oil and the catch can setup on the car works great now. But this can setup is, is it's almost like plugging off the PCB um, the way that it's set up right now. So let's, uh, let's see what she does. guys the black line is the old run the orange is the new and you can definitely tell that the intake is plateauing up top here so definitely not really making any more power with the higher rpm i did spin it a little bit higher 7200 on that run just to kind of see if it uh, would pick up at all and it did not it actually started to start falling above 7000 so we'll pull the limiter back to where it was and uh yeah you can see right here it picked up everywhere uh, a couple horsepower so Get rid of that crankcase pressure, boys. 346 wheel horsepower. It's exactly what we made the other night on the best run. So, yeah, I mean, we might be able to squeeze like the four horsepower more out of it to make that 350 number. I think that'd be cool. Um, we'll try. Otherwise, uh, yeah, anyways, I'm probably gonna wrap it up anyways. We might make a little bit more power with the car and I might continue tweaking it a little bit, but this video is already probably really long. And I appreciate you guys that made it to the end. If you did, be sure to drop a like and uh, subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. And uh, check out my website and don't open a PayPal dispute. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, have a great night and a better tomorrow, guys. We'll see you later.